Roderick, this was never supposed to be a personal issue with you. This was never supposed to get to that level, but it kind of breaks my heart that you've taken things to that level. Because what these people don't understand and what they don't know is that in August 2013, while I was laying in a hospital room in Toronto, not knowing if I was ever going to wrestle again, while they were running tests on my broken neck, I called two guys who I consider to be two of my best friends to be in that hospital room with me. One of those guys was Jimmy Jacobs. The other was you, Roderick Strong. And as the test results started to come back, and it was obvious that I was gonna wrestle again, I had a vision and I started to devise a plan that would go on to become what we now call the decade. But even then, Roderick, even then I had questions and I had reservations about including you in this because as long as I've known you, Roderick, you've only ever thought about yourself. And whether you realize this or not, from day one, I was testing you, Roderick. I had to know, could Roderick Strong put the decade ahead of himself? Would you be willing to sacrifice for something that is bigger and greater than yourself? And every test, Robbie, every test, you did exactly what I hoped you wouldn't do. And you did exactly what I knew you would do. Roderick, you could have cared less about the decade. You could have cared less about our agenda. You only cared about Roderick Strong. You are selfish, self-centered, and egotistical, and you are jealous and envious of anyone you deem to be a threat to your spot. Take Adam Page, for example. As I tried to groom this guy and prepare him to be a top guy here in Ring of Honor, you undercut me at every step. And these issues, they all came to a head in Lakeland, Florida. And I made the call, Roderick. I made the decision that you had to go. And it wasn't personal, Roddy. I did it for the survival of the group. I did it for the survival of the decade. So now you think the best thing for you to do is to make this personal. And I'm not sure if you're blinded by your ego and the level of your arrogance or if it's your own stupidity and the level of your ignorance. But Roddy, when you made this personal, you stepped into a world in which I thrive. <laughs> you wanna go on Sirius XM and take some personal shots, take some pot shots at me. Well, I can come out here and I can take pot shots at you too, Roddy. <laughs> For example, you were on the road to irrelevance here in Ring of Honor before I pulled you into the decade. The only reason you are relevant right now in Ring of Honor, Roddy, is because of me because of B.J. Whitmer. Better yet, let's talk about your title reign when you were on top and you almost put the company out of business. Oh, did that, did that strike a nerve, Roddy? Was that a little personal? Oh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do now, Roddy? You gonna come out here? You gonna cut one of your lame promos on me? Let's make this personal, Roddy. Let's take it to that level. March 1st, Las Vegas, Nevada, live on pay-per-view 13th anniversary, Roddy. Let's find out if you are Mr. ROH. Let's find out if you really want exactly what you've asked for. Let's do business, Roddy. I'll see you in Vegas, buddy. Live from the fight capital of the world. Las Vegas, Nevada will host Ring of Honor's 13th anniversary. Winner takes all. ROH world champ Jay Briscoe bets the house in a high stakes four quarter survival. TV champ Jay Lethal defends against international star Alberto El Patron. And Maria Canellas goes all in against ODB in a women's grudge match that you can't miss. Ring of Honor 13th anniversary winner takes all. Live Sunday, March 1st. Only on pay per view.